I want to lead you through each day of this race weekend because I think it helps tell the story of how many ups and downs can come through auto racing and how a man can remain undefeated even after he's departed us. This race is a back and forth battle between multiple drivers and the winning move will come with the white flag waving in the air. I went over this in my previous video, but Sunday, February 18th was a dark day in NASCAR history. Despite Michael getting his first win in NASCAR history, the headlines printed in the newspaper the next day, they weren't celebrating his win. In the immediate days after Dale's passing, many conversations were had about whether they should go back to racing at all. The calendar had them scheduled to go to Rockingham, North Carolina in just a week and many teams, drivers, and fans were wondering what the right thing was to do. And I gotta admit, that's a difficult place to be in. In times like this, many were wondering, well, what would Dale want us to do? And Dale would want them to race. So race in Rockingham, they would. On Thursday, a memorial service is held for Dale. Many fellow auto racing drivers and friends of his come to his service, including Brooks and Dunn. On Friday, a press conference is given with a bit of an update as to the cause of death for Dale Earnhardt. It's revealed that one of Dale Earnhardt's lap belts broke during the crash, and this led to the fatal injuries that Dale suffered. Dale Jr. also spoke during the press conference, where he came out in support for his other drivers, mainly Sterling Marlin. Sterling Marlin was getting death threats at the time, and many wanted to point the finger at him for the crash. And Dale Jr. wanted to stop that on the spot. I do want to say that... Uh any notion or any idea that or any blame placed upon anyone whether it be uh, Sterling Marlin or anybody else for that matter uh, is ridiculous and will not be tolerated. Saturday is the first time that cars are back on the track. They'll run a practice session qualifying and then another practice session called happy hour before the race on Sunday. Michael's practice session doesn't go super well. He said he, uh, he said he was going for the pole. The problem was he was just practicing. <laughs> Picked a bad time to be going for the pole. But it's not too bad. He put in a good qualifying effort with the backup car and he'll be starting in seventh. Dale Jr. struggled with his qualifying lap and he'll be starting towards the middle of the pack back in 25th. But there's one more Dale Earnhardt Incorporated car left to go. Let's see how he does. Steve Park as quick as so far. That bumps Bobby Labonte off the pole. Steve put in a blisteringly quick lap, qualifying in second. Sorry, we didn't really talk too much about you in the last video, Steve, but he was in there. You might have seen his name on the lap leaderboard. But Steve was one of the 18 cars caught up in the big one, and his day was effectively done after that. Now, Steve comes into this race with a stat sheet pretty similar to Michael's, getting the single win of his career at his hometown track in Watkins Glen, New York. The sport of NASCAR has also been very unkind to Steve, but in a bit of a different way. Steve Park, to put it nicely, has had his ass kicked by the sport. While practicing in Atlanta, Steve Park has a tire go down, sending him into the wall multiple times. None of these hits look particularly fun on their own. The results of that accident would be a broken collarbone, a broken leg, a broken shoulder blade, and two chipped teeth to show for it. Steve Park would unfortunately suffer a few more accidents later on in his career that would ultimately keep him from showing much of his true talent that I think he had. But I don't want to harp on that too much because Steve deserves his moment to shine here today. Although his qualifying lap was the fastest at the time, he's going to be starting second, which still is pretty damn good. But I wonder who's going to be starting in first. Oh, it's that guy, Jeff Gordon. This guy here is going to be some seriously tough competition. This is Jeff Gordon's ninth season running full-time in NASCAR, and he's put up some damn impressive numbers for his time here in the sport. He's already won three championships in 52 races and just 258 starts. I just want to put that into some perspective. See, at this point in his career, if Jeff Gordon was on the grid, he had over a 20% chance of winning the race. Now that might not sound super high, but those numbers are massively impressive when you put him against some of his counterparts. Now see, out of every driver in NASCAR history so far, 
to win 50 races, Jeff Gordon has the highest win percentage out of all of them. And he's the only one over 20%. Better than legends like Bobby Allison, Junior Johnson, and even Richard Petty himself. He's already put together a Hall of Fame career at this point, and there will be plenty more good moments to show for in Jeff's future. Jeff Gordon won three championships in 1995, 1997, and 1998, but 2000 was a bit of a down year for him. I say a bit, I mean the guy finished ninth. It was by no means a poor performance, but it would be a different driver who would take home the championship in the year 2000. Bobby Labonte, much like many of the characters in this video, also comes from a family of race car drivers. During Bobby's career, he'll compete alongside of his brother Terry, and by winning the championship in 2000, Bobby and Terry Labonte became the first pair of brothers to both ever lay claim to the NASCAR Cup Series championship title. In fact, Bobby won the race in 1996 in Atlanta, the final race of the season, with Terry Labonte finishing fifth. This finish would give Terry Labonte his second career championship, and the two celebrated together at the end of the race. Now Bobby's lining up third here on the grid today. He'll try to be fighting for the win here too, just like Jeff Gordon and many other cars here on the grid today. So we've got some strong competition that we'll be going up against here today. But I want to introduce you to one more final character, one with a little bit less experience. Kevin Harvick is making his NASCAR Cup Series debut, and he's been given a bit of a difficult job. It's his first ever NASCAR Cup Series race, and he's filling into Dale Earnhardt's seat. Kevin Harvick has had an impressive career so far in the lower levels of NASCAR, coming in third the previous season in the Bush Series, and he also worked as a test driver for Dale Earnhardt and for Richard Childress. He's got a difficult spot to fill, no doubt, but to his credit, Kevin Harvick has not backed down from any of it. Dale Earnhardt was, the, was probably the best race car driver there ever is going to be in NASCAR, and nobody will ever replace him, and I think uh, we all know that, so uh, I would hope that you guys don't expect me to replace him. Kevin will go on to have an impressive NASCAR career, but today he's just a young buck making his debut. The team behind the now 29 car has decided to swap out from the number 3 car in honor of Dale Earnhardt. And they're also running a paint scheme with swapped colors. Wherever Dale's car was black, it's now white. Kevin's starting in the back of the pack. He's in 36, alongside Bobby's brother, Terry. We'll keep our eyes on Kevin Harvick and see how his debut goes, along with our good friends Dale Jr. and Mikey Waltrip throughout the race as well. They're recurring characters here though, so we don't need to really give them too much of an introduction. With that being said, let's dive on into the race. Race day comes on Sunday and it's a dark and gloomy day. Rain clouds just surround the track and continuously downpour onto the racing surface. It's not a beautiful day for racing. It's kind of like the heavens have opened up and are crying down on the track. It's weirdly symbolic given how the past week has felt in the auto racing community. Before the race begins, Jeff Gordon gives a really nice symbolic gesture here. He's qualified on pole position, but if you look, he's pulled a position back. Pole center Jeff Gordon has backed off one row, leaving the pole position open in honor of Dale Earnhardt. We go green flag racing and Jeff Gordon leads the pack away into turns one and two. He gets a great run through the corner and he pulls a few car lengths away after just a few turns. But then... Oh, we got trouble, trouble already. Three cars, it's four Dale cars. Junior, it's Dale Jr. Earnhardt Jr. with Jimmy Spencer, Kenny Wallace, and Mike Wallace. And it is Earnhardt Jr.'s car. This cannot be happening to that young man. Dale Earnhardt crashes into the wall in an eerily similar angle as the crash the week before. This is not how anyone wanted this weekend to go. We aren't even a lap into this race and Dale Earnhardt has been absolutely taken out of competition for this race. Dale Jr. checks up for a car in front and Ron Hornaday just ends up tagging up into the back end of Dale Jr. 
Dale Jr. walks away from the car and I think it kind of just looks worse than it really is because of the high banking here at Rockingham. They end up taking the car to the garage, but after looking the thing over, it's pretty clear their day is done. The broadcast decides to dedicate a moment of silence during the third lap of each race during the 2001 season. And unfortunately, the first time we're going to be doing it, it's not really the way anybody wanted to be doing it. This portion of the race just feels like we're kind of stuck in a racing hell. There's barely enough rain to prevent us from going racing. The cars are just circling around lap after lap after lap under pace car conditions until after 30 laps of caution flag pace laps, the track finally is dried enough for us to go green flag racing. Green is out for the second time today. Jeff Gordon jumps out to an early lead with Steve Park following behind its second. But Steve Park is A-OK -okay with running here in second. He's learned a bit of a strategy about running around here in Rockingham. He's learned to stay off the brakes in the corner. Believe it or not, it's a bit slower to start, but if you stay off of the brakes and you let off earlier, by doing this, you are gonna be way better on your tire wear. Let him go for the first 10 laps of the race. You'll catch up to him 20 laps later. So it's a strategy that was taught to him by his former boss, Dale Earnhardt. Sure enough, about 10 laps after we go green flag racing, Steve Park has caught up to Jeff Gordon. Steve Park makes a move on the inside line and Jeff Gordon is unable to fight back against it. And Steve moves into the lead for the first time today. But this race is a battle, and the main battle we'll be dealing with today is the weather. Just a few laps after Steve Park takes the lead, we go caution flag again for the rain. Everyone comes down pit lane to pit and take fresh tires and fuel. With Steve Park's crew getting the job done the best, keeping him in the lead. I want to use this moment real quick to show you guys something that's pretty cool. The broadcast booth shows us these cameras that the pit crew have set up. They're these little overhead CCTV John things. It helps the crew see their pit stops and ways that they can improve them in the future. This is 2001 by the way. I know that this would be very easy to do today, but back in the day, this is some pretty cool stuff. And I love this camera angle by the way. They should show this live on the broadcast in the future. Just saying. But the rain today, it's not going to be letting up, and we're not going to be going racing again. The red flag is thrown, and crews are told to prepare for the resumption of this race on Monday. Monday comes around, and the entire vibe has certainly gone up a few beats. Gone are their rain clouds and gloomy skies. They've been replaced with clear blue skies and a warm sunny day. Today truly is a good day for auto racing. We line back up, and the leader is... Stacy Compton? Yeah, see, NASCAR had this rule back in the day where if you led one lap, you got a bonus five points in the standings, which is about the same as finishing two points up in a race. So guys would do some funky pit strategies to try and lead a lap and gain those bonus points. That'll happen a few times today. Stacy Compton, he stays out, but he'll get sent backwards fast on those old tires. And the running order will cycle out to Jeff Gordon in first, Steve Park in second, Bobby Labonte in fifth. Jeff Gordon will lead about 20 laps of this early stint here in today's restarted race, but Steve Park is staying true to his strategy. Let him pull away early and catch him later as tires start to wear away. Michael's starting to show some early pace here too. He's putting in laps that are faster than the leader, but it's Steve Park who's making a pass for the lead. Here's a kind of funny moment that you don't really see anymore today. Matt Kenseth in the 17 to Walt Ford, he's collected some of that duct tape stuff that they use to repair the cars really quickly. Uh, that tape, it, it fell off of someone else's car. And he's forced to pit because of it, because that tape has gone over the cool air intake for his car. Essentially, he needs to pit, or his engine will overheat, and he's gonna have a really bad time. Steve Park is the leader through the 100 lap mark but he's dealing with some lap down traffic and Jeff Gordon is keeping the battle on him. We go to commercial break and come back with Jeff Gordon the leader. Get used to this by the way, there's gonna be a few times where we go to commercial break and we come back and the lead has changed. It's a very, very fun thing to have happen to you. Steve Park, he's back in second and Michael Waltrip, he's gotten his car hooked up and he's ready to go. He's gotten his car up into third, and in a few laps, he'll eventually get past Steve Park as well and take second. 
Steve Park is the first one of our featured competitors down pit lane. He's been falling back a bit after leading early, and the advantages of coming in a lap or two early before your competitors, that could be the difference in a few tenths, which here at Rockingham is the difference of an entire backstretch. You could gain one, two, maybe even five positions just by getting in an early pit stop. Jeff Gordon comes down pit lane and he's given a friendly entrance courtesy of Ron Hornaday. That early pit stop, it's going to pay off for Steve Park because as they cycle out after the pit stops, Steve Park has taken advantage over the field and moves back into the lead. Sorry, we're a little crammed for room here. We'll have to, uh... There we go. That's better. Around lap 146, we'll get a check-in on Kevin Harvick. He's worked his way up the field, and after starting in 36th, he's up 20 spots, currently running in 16th place. It's not too shabby for your debut, Kevin. Kurt Busch also reminds us what it's like when you make a little bit of contact with the wall. Remember Kurt from last video? Sorry, Kurt. You're a really good driver, I promise. It's just we've caught you at some really bad points. I'm sorry, Kurt. Commercial break time at lap 156 and Steve Park still leads. You guys want to take a guess at what happens during this commercial break? You're right, a lead change. Jeff Gordon gets around Steve Park on the low line and he'll hold on to lead for about 20 laps. But Bobby Labonte has gotten his car dialed in. But Bobby Labonte has reeled him in. Bobby makes a pass on the high side of turns three and four and moves into the race lead. The next round of pit stops are upon us, and Jeff Gordon gets down pit lane early to take advantage of those fresh tires. It's a move that will have him cycle into the lead after all is said and done. Michael Waltrip has a bit of a stinker of a stop, and it puts him in the back of the field. And I might be hypothesizing here a little bit, but they might have made some changes to the car or something happened, because after this pit stop, Michael's not going to really be in competition at all today. He's just going to slowly drift backwards after this stop, eventually getting put a lap down on lap 241. Jeff Gordon continues as the race leader when the first caution in today's racing action comes out. Mike Skinner gets a little bit loose and turns one and two and spins out onto the apron. This is gonna get everybody to come down pit lane and Jeff Gordon's crew gets the best of it, keeping him in the lead. Steve Park comes out second and Bobby Labonte follows behind in third. Jeff Gordon will continue to lead after the green flag. That is, until Steve Park can pull out his rope-a-dope strategy, taking the lead 11 laps after the restart. Up front, Steve Park goes back for the lead. Steve Park's going to pull out to a sizable lead for this good portion of the green flag session here. And he'll hold on to the lead until Stacy Compton's engine decides to go kaput. See, back in the day, these engines weren't as reliable as they used to be, and it wasn't super uncommon to see an engine blow up a couple of times during the season. And when those things went kaput, they sprayed out a whole bunch of oil. And that'll give us a caution flag here in the race. Everybody makes their way down pit lane, and this could potentially be the last stop of the race. See, these cars can hold about 90 laps on a fuel run, and we have about 90 laps to go. You're going to be close on gas, but you might be able to make it to the end. Steve Park comes out of pit lane with the lead, but it's Jeff Gordon who gets the advantage coming out of turn two on the restart. With 63 to go, a cool little graphic appears on the broadcast. The pole winner has one win in the last 16 races here at Rockingham. 
It's a pretty surprising fact. You'd think whoever got pole position would be way more likely to win than once in the last 16 times. But the one guy to win here from pole? It's the guy who's leading right now, Jeff Gordon. With that being said though, Steve Park is closing in. We go to commercial at lap 333 with Jeff Gordon leading and Steve Park right behind. Do you want to guess or do you, you already know? Yeah, you already know. See, Steve Park, he, he, he's the leader after the commercial break. Using the strategy that Dale Earnhardt himself taught him, Steve Park has caught Jeff Gordon and makes a pass on the low line, putting himself back into the lead. With around 30 laps to go, the broadcast booth shows us how big the lead is for Steve Park. 1.3 seconds might not sound like a lot, and it's not, it's not a massive lead, but it's something to be comfortable with for now. But that being said, Bobby Labonte is starting to pick up the pace again in the closing stages of this race. He makes a pass around the inside of Jeff Gordon going into turn three, using some lack traffic as kind of a pick. Bobby's got a bad fast car right now and he's closing in on Steve Park quickly. After passing Jeff Gordon, the gap to Steve Park is about 1.6 seconds. After just 10 laps, Bobby has managed to close down that gap almost entirely with Bobby getting closer and closer each and every lap. That being said, a famous auto broadcaster once said, catching up in auto sports is one thing, and overtaking is another. With two laps to go, Bobby Labonte has gotten right up to Steve Park's bumper, and he's looking to get the win. Bobby makes a move on the high line, but Steve Park blocks his run. He's able to regroup and get a run on the backstretch, but Steve Park has got the power of a Dale Earnhardt Incorporated bumper, and he's going to use all of it. Park has the run off the high side, he clears the body, and Steve Park scores the second straight win for Earnhardt Incorporated and the second win of his career. As he wins, Steve Park pulls a black number three hat out of his car and waves it in the air. Him and Michael Waltrip high five, which totally is not awkward here by the way. As Steve Park is coming back into victory lane, he runs out of gas. He had just enough to get it into the checkered flag and then that was about it. He'll have to have his pit crew push his car into victory lane. This is definitely one of the most emotional races for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. In an interview with Steve Park, Dale Jr. says that this race win really helped rebuild the entire brand. It helped them get a sense of identity after the loss of Dale. I just think it's pretty cool that we're two races into this season and Dale has found a way to get himself into victory lane both times. This dude truly is unstoppable. Oh, hey, I forgot to mention, but Kevin Harvick came in 14th in this race. It's a pretty impressive finish for your first start for sure. I wonder if there's a video coming up about him soon.